was the news that you got this summer in some ways a relief just to say, okay, now I know what it is and now we know how to treat it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was a relief just because, you know, I never knew when it was going to end. And that was, the base, that was the biggest, you know, part. You never know when it's going to, like, at least get a little bit of control of it because having them back to back and so frequently was just, you know, wearing on me and on my family, so. So even though you knew since 2008 it was epilepsy, it's got to be a scary feeling when whatever they're giving you it's not helping and you're still having seizures and you're still having symptoms. It's got to be an awful scary and lonely feeling, huh? Yeah, it, it was because, I mean, I would have, I would also have sometimes where I would go, you know, like a three, three month period without having one. I mean, it's still not, you know, a good length of time, but you know, it would, it would give me a little hope every time. So like, you know, I would go for checkups and it would say, just, you know, just keep taking your medicine and keep doing, you know, getting your rest and all that. And, you know, I, I masked it for a year and, and then it just, you know, started happening again. It just never, never quit. Do you, in, in some ways you try to fight it yourself and say, well, no, you know, it, it can't be this or it can be this and try almost in some ways self-diagnose yourself and try to fight through it? For sure. I mean, always, always try to self-diagnose myself. I mean, you know, just thinking of going to sleep so, so early and, you know, you know, trying to wake up, you know, do other stuff and get active, you know, and all that. And it just, just never worked for me. The anxiety obviously came with a lot of the fear and the not knowing. Were, were there times where you're almost afraid to go to sleep at night because you are thinking what could happen while I sleep and when I wake up, I'm going to have this all again. It, was this all going through your mind when yeah. you go to bed at night? Basically, you know, every, every part of it because, you know, it'd be sometimes where I come back from a game, you know, and I'd be so ramped up that, you know, I either did good or, you know, maybe I did bad or, or whatever. And I don't go to sleep till about one, 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 two o'clock. And it's, and I'll just know that I like, if I wake up too early the next morning, I may have a seizure and no one's there, you know, so a lot of it weird on me. What do you recall of the first time you ever had a seizure or you ever had an episode? Do you have any memory of, of the first time and what you may have thought it was? and? What kind of fear you having at that time? I don't. The only memory I have of that day was, I mean, I had a I had a pet dog. I was living in Phoenix, Arizona, and I had a pet dog. And I woke up early because it was crying. And I went in there and I, I played around with it. My mother was sitting on the couch, and I was playing with the dog. And I threw its toy, you know, to go fetch. And that was it. I woke up. I woke up screaming some crazy stuff. Like, I th my mother said that I, I was telling her not to take my leg. You know, just, just screaming crazy stuff. I, I didn't even know. So, I mean, when when things aren't happening and, and you, again, you're trying to get it treated, but it's not working. Does depression set in? Do you start to, you know, go to the worst case scenario and actually start to put up your hands and say, what else is there to do? I mean. I got into the point where I, I just couldn't stand it. Yeah, I, I, I thought about giving up for sure. I mean, because it just, it never stopped. And every day, every seizure that I had, like it hurt my body because it felt like I just ran like a, a nonstop marathon at my full full strength. And it just it just kept, kept getting to my head. And I was just like, I, I want to quit, but you know, somebody's going to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to beat it because baseball is what I love to do, and that's, that's all I kept thinking of. Was, was the marijuana use, a way of almost kind of trying to medicate yourself and almost try to say, well maybe this, can help me, get through this or make me forget what I'm going through? Yeah, it was, it was point in times where I would use it, you know, to take away the anxiety. I mean because, I mean I know I messed up in the past, but I mean a lot of people. You know, never knew what what happened. So, I mean, I took my consequences like a man, and you know, and I just you know kept pushing forward because I just knew I could beat it some way or somehow. I, I guess you're at the point now where, where two things: number one, you you don't need it because you have medication that works, and number two, even if you did need it, you also have to weigh your baseball career versus that. So, I guess in many ways, it's great that you finally have found a way to to treat this. Oh yeah, I'm blessed because. I mean, at this point in my life right now, I know baseball is, you know, it's it's not a fair sport, but, but you know, you get your chances and your chances come quick and they go quick. So, I mean, this this couldn't come in at more of a perfect time. 
of me getting my, you know, life together and my, my health, you know, together and all that because it's perfect timing. And every tough story hopefully comes to a happy ending and it sounds to me like if it's not a happy ending yet, it's on the way to becoming a happy ending, isn't it? For sure, because I know, I mean, I know the goal. And I know where I'm supposed to be playing. You know, I know my talent. And, you know, my family knows my talent. And, and thanks for every team that I've played for seeing my talent as well. And I just know where I, I need to be.